everybody and welcome to Chef's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making something different. It's not baking, it's going to be cooked on the stove top and it's chicken uh, paprikash. This is a Hungarian dish and it's chicken cooked with paprika or pa paprika basically and uh, should be very very tasty. Now I'm using Hungarian uh, paprika or paprika you could use another one, but I'm using Hungarian and it is a sweet paprika. Not smoked and not hot, it's sweet. This dish doesn't need it to be hot. And it's actually quite simple and it really doesn't take very long. And usually this is served with a special type of pasta, which is called spetsa. Um, and that is popular in places like Hungary and Germany and Austria and places like that and that's a little bit messy I may show you how to do that but if I don't you can either look it up or you can use ordinary pasta any pasta that you want basically so I go on to the ingredients for the chicken paprikash and for this I have 10 chicken thighs with the skins on and the bones in but I've trimmed off the excess skin from each of those I have 200 grams, which is about seven ounces of onion thinly sliced and 150 grams of red bell pepper thinly sliced. Uh, so that would be uh, three and a half, four and a half, five and a quarter ounces. Uh, you don't have to be too precise on, on those measurements as long as they're thinly sliced. And the um, not all recipes use bell pepper, so you, you could leave that out if you wanted to. I have four cloves of garlic, which I have chopped, but not minced, so they're still sort of chunky. I have one can, uh, 400 grams, 13 and three quarter ounce can of chopped tomatoes, which I have put in a strainer and allowed the juice to drain out, basically, or the, or the water to drain out. I have uh, 750 milliliters, three cups of chicken stock, 18 grams, two tablespoons of my sweet Hungarian paprika. And I'm going to use uh, a third of a cup, 80 millilitres of sour cream. And with that, I'm going to use 25 grams, three tablespoons of plain flour. So that's all the ingredients apart from some parsley to add in at the end. So the first thing we need to do is to brown off our chicken. And I'm going to do this in a large um, Dutch oven, basically, but on the stove top. So I'm going to heat a tablespoon or so of oil and then we'll brown the chicken on both sides. So I'm going to put the chicken in skin side down and I'm going to cook that until it's browned. And then I'm going to turn it over and brown it on the other side. And as you can see, that's beginning to brown. So I'll cook that for another couple of minutes on the skin side and then turn them over and do the same again. And with the chicken browned on both sides, I'm going to take that out of the pan now and I'm going to um, drain off this excess fat and then just put some oil into the pan so that I can cook off the onion. So I'm going to leave the fond on the bottom of the pan. Oh, and I should say, of course, I will be adding salt and pepper into the um, dish as I uh, cook it to flavour it. There's probably enough oil in there now, or fat in there now. So I'm going to add in the peppers and the onion and the tomato.
and I'm going to sweat those down for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to add my garlic in as well. And I'll add in maybe a teaspoon of salt and a good grind of pepper and I haven't put the paprika in because uh, that burns very quickly so I'm going to add that in once my stock's gone in so I'm just going to cook this down scraping along the bottom to loosen the fond and get that incorporated as well now let that sweat down for 10 minutes and while the onions and peppers and tomatoes are cooking down, I'm going to take my 80 uh, millilitres, a third of a cup of sour cream, and I'm going to put my 25 grams of flour into it. And I'm simply going to stir that and get that all combined into a thick paste. Then I'm just going to set that aside until we've cooked the chicken in the stock and this will then get added into the uh, stock to thicken it but it, it can sit there waiting for that. So with the onions softened and the peppers softened nicely. I'm going to pour in my stock. And then I'm going to add the paprika as well. and stir that around and I'm going to add the chicken in and bring everything up to a boil and then I'm going to cook it on a simmering heat for about 30 minutes turning the chicken over part way through and I will test the temperature of the chicken after the 30 minutes and it needs to have reached uh, at least 91 degrees Celsius which I think uh, is about 195 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that the chicken is cooked right through so as you can see that's uh, started to, to bubble now and boil on the top um, 
and so I'm going to cover it with its lid and I'm going to just let that cook away turning it over part way through for at least 30 minutes then I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. So for the Spetzler I have 280 grams which is one and two thirds cups plus three tablespoons of plain flour. I have three medium eggs which would be large in the USA, 180 millilitres of milk which is three quarters of a cup. I have four grams, about two thirds of a um, teaspoon of uh, salt. I have a quarter of a teaspoon, a good or a very good pinch of nutmeg and I have about a quarter of a teaspoon up to half a teaspoon of pepper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk the milk into the eggs just to get those combined. That's good like that. And then I'm going to put all the dry ingredients into a large bowl. And I'm going to give those a good mix around just to get the salt and pepper and nutmeg mixed into the flour and then I'm going to pour the egg mixture in and I'm going to mix that until it becomes a thick and sticky paste basically And that is just about right. So I'm going to simply set that aside and leave that until our chicken is cooked through. And um, I will heat a saucepan, a, large, a very large pan with about four litres which would be 16 cups of water which I've put two teaspoons of salt into and so I've tested my chicken after 30 minutes and it's reached temperature so I'm going to take a spoonful of the liquid and pour it into my sour cream and flour mixture and I'm going to mix it around and then I'll take another spoonful and do the same again. This is just to temper this mixture so that the sour cream doesn't split or separate once it goes into the hot liquid. And that's good like that. So then I'm going to pour that into the chicken and I'm going to stir it around and put it back on the heat and I'm going to simmer that until it thickens up a little bit. And while that's happening, I can try to make my Spetzler. So 
So that can go back onto the heat. And for the Spetzler, my water is coming up to the boil. And what I have to do is I'm going to wet this surface of this grater with some cold water. And then I'm going to scoop up an amount of this batter, which is nice and thick now and sticky. And I'm going to press it through that so that it drops into the boiling water. And then once it's in the water, it will cook for one to two minutes. And when it floats, it means that it's done and I need to scoop it out and put it into a bowl and continue with the remainder. You don't want to put it all in at one go. You just need a, a single layer, basically, that will float on the top of the water once it's cooked. So my water is boiling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my grater and I'm going to take an amount of the batter and pour it onto the grater and then I'm going to push that through like that and do the same with more basically until I've cooked it all And as it floats, I'm going to pick it up and transfer it into a bowl. So what I've done is I've put a tablespoon of butter into my spatula and I've stirred it through like that so that it doesn't stick together and I've stirred into my paprikash two tablespoons of the parsley which I chopped up. So that's actually all that I have to do and I can then serve that up but unfortunately I'm not going to taste it now because I'm going to take it round to my niece so I need to package it up and take it round to my niece um, but I will, I'll just taste the sauce uh, just for something to taste mm. has a lovely lovely taste very very good indeed so that's going to be it for this video and I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking